What we are looking at here is the basic window in Logic Pro 10. And I got there by creating a new sequence. This new project, I've told it to give us a couple of audio tracks. And because what I'd like to do is show you the difference between how loops work, okay, and how drummer works. But let's cover the basics of what it takes to be able to put drummer into a project. I've got a couple of audio tracks here. I can go over to the loop bin, which we open up here with the little loop icon. And we're going to go into some favorites that I've set aside. So let's find a couple of things here in blue, which mean they are loops. How about this? Okay. Let's go to the... There we go. Funky 70s Rhodes Piano. And then there's a couple of other ones here. Sorry, it sounds like I'm getting an occasional glitch. It's just because we got a lot of applications. But here is a loop. Now, a loop is the same doggone performance over and over again. So let's have a look. Let's import the tempo information from the loop. It's going to slow us down here to 100 BPM. By the way, notice if you've not worked with Logic Pro 10 before, much of your musical reference information is organized up here in the control bar. You've got access to certain tools that turn on and off different functions like the click and the count in. But most importantly, here's where you are in terms of measures and beats. Here's the tempo. All you have to do is click and drag it up or down and you can change it quite easily. And here is the key. And again, you can click on it and change it to something new. Now let's see, uh, at some point, we want to go into the key of E because I'm going to go drag one of those uh, Rhodes things in. But let's listen to how the, the, the drums sample play. This is a loop. Okay, what's interesting is this loop was created and sampled at 100 BPM, but because Apple loops have been sliced to allow access to the internal beats, we can actually push the tempo up a little bit to a little more rock and roll friendly 115 BPM. Now, by the way, I'm going to use some keyboard shortcuts because I don't want to have to be stuck navigating here back to go to the beginning and go to the selection start and all the rest of that. So if you see us navigating around a little bit like this, it's because I'm using keyboard shortcuts that I've created that are built into Logic, by the way, to navigate forward and backward by a measure or when we set markers in, you'll see that I've got some marker shortcuts too. But here's a cool thing. Let's say I want more than one bar. And by the way, notice we are now playing this drum part at 115 BPM as opposed to 100 BPM, which is its original sampled tempo. So let's show you some basics of what you can do in Logic. You want more drums? You just drag out the loop to extend it and it repeats automatically. These are aliases, which means it's exactly the same thing playing over and over again. And boy, after four bars, that's going to get really boring without some fills. Okay, you get the basic idea. Now let's go back to the beginning and let's navigate forward a little bit and say at measure three, I want to change the groove up a little bit. I'm still going to keep these drums for another measure or so, but I want to signal that there's something different going on. So I'm going to <coughs> create a marker. And notice there's a keyboard shortcut, command up arrow. So I'm going to command up arrow, or actually I just selected it there. Let me take this out and let me command up arrow. And there is a new marker. And this is important because I'm going to be able to tell Logic that this marker does something special. So I can type in it a, an informative label. I'll go back here to the beginning, create another marker at the very beginning, and call it intro. Now, the cool thing about it is, now that we've got markers, we can navigate like a house on fire. Next marker, previous marker, command right arrow, command left arrow, zip, zip. Zip. Boy, this is just way too much fun and ultimately much faster than trying to navigate through measure by measure, okay? And we can always, uh, wherever we are, we can always go back to the very beginning by using the return to the beginning, which is the return key. Return. Return to the beginning, okay? 